Hello, everybody. Right, let me start my video. Hello. So welcome to my session. Thank you for um, coming here today. So we're going to be looking at why early childhood education matters. I'm very excited to be here. And I would like to thank the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority for inviting me to participate in this initiative and actually for putting this program on. So, so let's just have a look at how the session's going to go. So you're going to all be on mute. There is a chat function and there's also a questions box. So if you want to write a question um, and you don't want anyone else to see it, you can put it in the questions box. But if you want to have um, your question seen by everyone else, you can put it in the chat function. Um, the session is going to be recorded today and it will be available for you um, after the session. I will try and answer some questions as I see them come up, but at the end of the session, we'll be um, allowing some time for some questions and answers. So let me start by introducing myself. I'm actually a mother of two grown up boys. I was born and raised in the UK, but I've been in um, early education for about 25 years now. Um, I'm an expert in learning and development for early years. And when my children left the nest um, and I wasn't needed so much, I came to the UAE and it was in about 2016. I joined the Ministry of Education and I was lucky enough to lead the team that introduced the first um, inspection framework across the whole of the seven Emirates. So I've probably inspected every nursery across the UAE. So I have a really good understanding of nursery provision. So in today's session, I'm going to highlight why early childhood is so important. I'm going to give you some information about early childhood provision in the UAE, how it's structured and how it's regulated. And I hopefully you'll discover why choosing the right nursery is crucial. And I'm going to give you some tips, some key components to look for when you're choosing a nursery. Now I have prepared a handout for you with a list of questions and um, things to look for to observe when you go to a nursery and that will be available on the website as well. So incredibly, when a baby is born, the average brain is about a quarter of the adult brain. It doubles in size within the first year and it keeps growing to about 80% of an adult sized brain by the age of three. And by the age of five, a child's brain has developed 90%. So in those first few years, all the experiences, all the interactions with the world is shaping the brain. It's laying the foundation for later life. So let's have a little bit of a look more at brain development. So how does the brain grow? Well, actually the brain grows through interactions. So all those interactions that a baby is having with the world or the, or the exploring. And what actually happens is that the interactions fire up the neurons and makes connections go stronger across the brain. So more stimulation, more brain growth. Under stimulation, underdeveloped brain. Now I was considering showing this picture on my slide today, um, but actually I'll just talk to you about it. I've seen a picture of a, th a three-year-old's brain, a normal developed child that's had loving interactions, and let's say it's about the size of a tennis ball. And then next to it, there's a brain of a three-year-old that's been neglected. So they haven't had the loving relationships, they haven't had the interaction. And in relation to the size of the brain that's a tennis ball, the brain itself is a peanut. 
So actually it really highlights that, you know, all those interactions, everything we do with our children in those early years is very important. Dr. John. So you as a parent- Sorry to might... interrupt, but uh, if you want to start sharing your screen, you can, because we cannot see it right now. Oh, you can't see me. Okay, hang on one minute. I can see myself, that's strange. My video is on, I've got um, my video on, so I don't see why you can't see me. It's only your screen sharing that's missing right now. You, you, can, you can see my screen or you can no, see me. I can only see you. Ah, okay, share screen then. Can you see it now? That's perfect. Uh, but we have to do the uh, slides of you because now we, have, we see your notes as well. I'm so sorry about this, the technicalities of uh, this. So, where do I do that? Let's have a look. Up on top where it says display settings. Yeah. Click on that. And duplicate slides so if you can. Or swap view, slap, swap, that, that one, yeah. Yeah, I'm clicking it and it's not clicking. It's so not. you have to try the other one? No, it's not doing it. Um, let me just see if I can get some technical support. Wait one minute. Just wait Thank one you. minute then. I'm just getting some technical support to help me here. Because they were saying they could see my notes as well. Also, please turn turn back your camera on if you, yes. if, if it's possible. I will do. Just wait and see if I can rectify this image. So, can you okay. see my my screen now without the notes? That's perfect. We can see your screen. Just turn on your camera now. I will do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, I'm back now. So everything's okay. You can see my screen and you can see me. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. So let me just go back then because I had some images on my slide I wanted to share with you. So here, this is the image of the brain development showing that by the age of five, that 90% of the brain has um, developed. And then here we have the neurons and actually the connections, the, the stimulation that fires up these connections that builds the brain. And some information on the screen here. Okay, so I am really sorry for the uh, technical issue I experienced. I hope it hasn't affected your experience. Okay, so this slide I love, I love this picture. And as a parent, you may think to yourself, well, how can I support my child? How can I help the brain to go? Well, actually just developing loving, caring relationships will fire up those connections. 
So as you can see here from the advances of technology, we have an adult affectionately kiss, kissing a child. And as you can see by the orange um, flecks on the screen, that the child is being stimulated and that is actually developing those connections. The adult's brain is also being stimulated, but the adult's brain is fully grown and it won't grow anymore, but it's just a highlight, it's still good stimulation. So a good cuddle, you can't kiss and cuddle your children enough. So let's have a look at how children develop. So there's actually four main domains of child development. They're all interrelated and they all rely on each other. And it's during these early years that children's development is fluid and it's flexible and it's being shaped by their experiences. So I just want to give you an example here. So when a newborn baby is learning to speak, they are listening and copying the speech sounds of the language that they're immersed in. So for example, if a child is hearing Arabic and is copying Arabic speech sounds, it will develop the muscles within their mouth to make the guttural sounds in the back of the throat because that um, comes with the Arabic language. So as an adult, myself, I'm trying to learn Arabic. And I find it very frustrating because of, I can't make those sounds. And that's because of, as an adult, all my developing and all my muscles are fixed now. And because I wasn't exposed to those sounds, my muscles weren't trained to make those sounds. So no matter how much I try, it's going to be very difficult for me. So this is why it's really good as well for children under the age of three and five to learn as many languages as possible because of their developing all those speech sounds and all those muscles. Now physical development, you may feel very um, obvious, but again, how uh, everything interlinks because toilet training is actually very much a physical development because you have to have developed the muscles to be able to control going to the toilet. And social and emotional development, that's about your self-esteem, your confidence, attitudes, how children develop friendships, and how they become resilient. And then underpinning it all, you have cognitive, de um, cognitive development, at processing all the thoughts that the child is having. Now this is all happening at the same time. It's not like one month you're going to have Oh, I'm going to develop physically this year, uh, this month, and next month I'm going to develop my language. No, it's all happening at the same time. So when we come to look at early childhood care and education, the word education has a very broad meaning, especially for children under three. So it, you're educating children to be polite. You're educating children how to use the toilet, how to be independent, how to make friends, how to follow rules. And the term educare, combining care and education, is commonly used because it's very difficult to separate out, in those early years, care and education. Now, the way children learn, they learn through interaction with other people but they learn by being shown, they learn by watching and listening. So for example, when they're learning communication and learning to speak, they're watching and listening how language goes. And when you have the, a baby uh, babbling and then you repeat the babble and the baby waits and then the baby babbles again, you're actually teaching the child conversation. So they're having to learn all those social clues. They learn by exploring, by touching, and they learn by their environment. So if you think about a, um, a baby in a high chair, when they drop their cutlery, they love it. They'll do it over and over again because they'll see it drop to the floor. This is because they're learning about the world around them. They're making sense of it, cause and effect. When I do this, something happens.
So I have a little video here for you, and it's just to highlight that actually imitation and children watching is one of the main ways that they learn. So let's see. That makes me smile when I watch that. So yes, so children learn by watching. So we are teaching them through our actions. And that terminology, I don't know whether you're familiar with it, but parents are children's first educators. That means because we are influencing them. What we do, how we behave. Oh, no, I want to go to the next slide. There we go. Hang on, let me just go back. Okay, so having a think about yourself and education and what's right for you, what's best for your child. Now that you understand that early education is important, but due to necessity, many parents will have to turn to either a nanny or a nursery to care for their children because of they may have to go back to work. And as an expat myself, and having many expat friends, we tend to be here without our extended family. So we don't have our parents with us, our parents, um, our mother-in-law. So we don't have the care support network to help us if we want to return to work. So we therefore have to think about alternatives. So in the UAE, you have a nursery, nursery provision, private nurseries. They operate, they take children from the age of 45 days up to four years. Um, a nanny, a nanny is another option. You know, they're able to care for a child from birth till whenever you want to keep them. You have private schools that start at four years and you have government kindergartens that start at four years. Now, it's a very important decision to know what to do, especially with the very young children, the children under the age of three or four. You know, is it a nursery or is it a nanny? Now, 58% of children actually in the UAE are left in the care of untrained nanny maids for about 50 to 70 hours per week. Knowing now what you know about how important those early years are, my suggestion would be that if you do choose a nanny, that you look for certain requirements. You get some references. You find out what experience they have. Have they had any training? Do they have first age, uh, first aid? So if a nanny is engaging and interactive, well-trained, they can have a really positive influence on children. But, I'm going to talk to you about preschool, so nurseries. So provision for children under the age of four. Now, this graph here shows you that um, there was a study taken for children at the age of 16 who took their school exams. So it was in English and maths. And the results are recorded here. So children that attended low quality nurseries, their results at the age of 16 were the lowest. And as you can see, medium quality, the results go up. And both in English and maths, children who went to good quality 
nursery education had better outcomes at the age of 16. So there is a direct correlation between the quality of early education and the outcomes of children later on. But how do you know what is good quality? How do you know if you're going to choose a nursery that they're delivering good quality? So I have a poll here and I am really hope that I'm going to be able to get this to work. So here we go. So I want you to answer that when you're looking for a nursery, what do you think is the most important indicator of good quality? And can you see the poll? Shall I relaunch poll, see if it happens? Allow, continue. Oh, I don't think the poll is working. So I had some questions here. Um, so what do you think is the most important indicator of good quality? Would it be high fees? Maybe, you might think. Um, maybe you might think it's a professional website with lots of information. You might think that actually a nursery being part of a, train, a chain is an indicator of good quality. You might think that the curriculum is um, the reason. Oh, I can see that somebody's voted. That the curriculum, you know, if it's a British curriculum, an American curriculum, that might be an indicator of good quality. It could be that the building is impressive, clean, with new furniture, lots of resources. And it could be, you might think, that staff are qualified in early childhood. And I can see people now are voting. That's very interesting. What? In. I'm very pleased with the results. You're a very knowledgeable um, bunch of people. Let's see if anyone else is going to vote. 17, 18. I think I'll share the results now. So, let's end poll. Share results. I really hope you can see these results. They're really, really good. <laughs> because you're absolutely right that actually the main um, indicator for good quality nursery provision is the quality of the staff. If the staff are qualified in early childhood, that has a direct impact on the quality of the nursery. Um, some people have said curriculum and a couple of people have said an impressive clean building with new furniture and lots of resources. Lovely. Okay, stop sharing the results. Okay, so here, to help you choose your nursery, we're gonna have a look at some of, some of the elements that you can turn to to help with that decision. Now, internationally, inspection is the way to regulate and improve quality in any educational establishment. So you have a body of professional and knowledgeable people. They'll make judgments about the quality of the school or nursery and give them areas to improve. The results get published so that you as a parent, you can make an informed decision. You can go to KHDA website, um, ADEC website, and you can read and have a look at what those professionals have judged the quality of that school to be. Now, Another um, thing that you can look for is accreditation. So 
Some nurseries have actually gone for international accreditation and that may help with you with that decision. And also you can go to recommendations from other people. However, when it comes to nursery provision, at the moment, the inspection that we have for nurseries is compliance. So it will be looking at if the nursery is meeting certain regulations in terms of ratio, in terms of staff qualification, in terms of health and safety, which is all excellent. What the inspection at the moment for nurseries, there's no evaluation. So there's no judgment of quality like there is for schools. And that can actually prove a little bit of a concern because of how can we know what quality this nursery is? I, like I said, we can go to accreditation, but here in the UAE, there's only a very small handful of nurseries that have accreditation, and they'll look for an international accreditation um, for Preschool Learning Alliance or National um, Daycare Association. So I think for parents here in the UAE, you have to go on reputation and you also have to go on your own gut feeling. But what I want to do is give you some tips, some things to look out for to help you make that decision. So first of all, we have this saying in the UK, and I don't know in other nationalities, but what it says on the tin has to be inside the tin. And that's very much the same for a curriculum. So for example, if you go to Carrefour and you pick up some chickpeas, when you get home, you expect to find chickpeas inside. So this must be the same for a curriculum. So if you choose to send your child to a British curriculum school, you would expect your paying fees that actually that child will be receiving a British curriculum. So here in the UAE, we have the early years foundation stage. So 75% of nurseries choose to deliver the early years foundation stage. We have Montessori. There's a few nurseries um, adopting the Montessori method. And there's the American Creative uh, curriculum. So there's a few curriculums that you can choose from. But I would suggest that you actually make sure that the nursery is delivering that curriculum because they may say they are, but I would double check. So what you can do, you can do a little bit of research yourself. You can find out some of the basics about the curriculum. But most importantly, speak to the nursery when you're viewing it. Ask them to explain to you what is the philosophy of the curriculum? How do you deliver the curriculum? But also ask them how many teachers trained in this nursery are trained to deliver this curriculum? Do they have experience of it? So do a little bit of research into that to make sure that the nursery understand the curriculum they say they're delivering. Another thing that you can uh, look out for when you're choosing a nursery is how they settle your child. What are they going to do within those first few weeks to help your child feel safe and secure when they come to nursery? Going to nursery for a child can be a big part of their life. You know, for the first time, they may be out of their parents' care. They're in the care of strangers. So we want to minimise that stress and that anxiety as much as possible. So any good nursery will have a settling in policy and procedure. So ask them, what do you do? Do they have, for example, on the first uh, day that your child's due to attend, do they allow you to stay with your child for an hour and then maybe take your child home afterwards? And then on the second visit, maybe your child will only stay for half a day and then slowly, slowly build up to 
more days, letting them know that they're, they're going to nursery, but they're going to come home afterwards, you know, building up that confidence. So find out about this settling in policy. Also, every child is different. Some children will settle at the nursery within the first two weeks, first day sometimes. Other children may take up to six weeks. So make sure that the nursery is flexible and meets your child's needs. Ask them, what are you going to do to find out about my child before they start? Another thing to talk about is the key person. So in the British curriculum, we have a, um, a policy called the key person policy. And that means that there's one adult identified in the nursery for a small group of uh, children. So that um, member of staff will carry out all the intimate care. They'll keep all the records of the children. They'll be the person that knows the most about the child. So ask the nursery, especially if they're an EYFS British nursery, tell me about your key person. Who is going to be my child's key person? During the settling in procedure, you'd, you will want that key person to be the one spending time with your child to, to make the bonds in those relationships for that child to feel secure. And also, you must ask about the staff to children ratio. There are regulations in the UAE for this. So, and I just need to go to my notes to make sure I get them right. Um, so for any child under the age of one, there should be four, um, ad one adult for every four children. For children between one to two, there should be one adult for every five children. For children aged two to three, there should be one adult for every eight children. And children between the age of three and four, there should be one adult for every 10 children. And these uh, adult ratios need to be qualified staff. So when you go and you have a look around the nursery, I know at the moment they're closed and they're uh, conducting virtual tours, so you actually can't see the children and the staff in the nursery. But ask about the ratios. You know, how many children are going to be in this class? How many adults are going to be looking after them? So some other questions to ask is about the staff skills. So definitely ask about the qualifications. Now, the most common qualification in the UAE is the CASH Level 3. So that's a Level 3 qualification in early childhood development. A manager of a nursery should have a degree in early childhood. You also want to ask them about their staff suitability. You know, how does the nursery ensure that the staff they employ are suitable to work with your nearest and dearest? What references? Do they get? Do they go to the previous nursery to find out how they interact with children? Um, do they carry out observations of the staff to watch how you know they are teaching? And also ask them about how often do the teachers um, participate in continuous professional development? You know how how often do they um, update their skills and their knowledge? And also you want to speak to them about their approach to behavior management. You want to know how they are going to teach your child to do the right thing, but also to have a positive strategy towards behavior management. You know, they, you don't want them to be telling off your child and to be scolding them. Um, you want it to have a positive approach to behavior management. So ask them, how do they deal with children's behavior and ask them how they're going to track and assess your child's development you know how do you know if my child is developing along expect, expected norms and how are you going to share this information with me
You also want to look at parent involvement. You know, does the nursery encourage you to stay and play? Do they involve you in the nursery? How do they engage parents? And do they get parents' feedback? Do they get an opinion so it helps shape their nursery to improve? You know, what types of information do they share with you about your child? Do you get daily, uh, da daily diaries um, that talk about what your child's ate, what activities they've done in the day? Um, a lot of nurseries have learning journals, and these are lovely uh, scrapbook type um, documents where there's photos and pieces of work of the child, everything that they've been doing within the day. So you feel connected, you understand what's happening while your child's at nursery. Um, some other nurseries have gone digital now and they have um, these platforms and apps where they can share photographs, videos, examples of work, update parents on their child development. So ask them those questions. You definitely want to have a look at health and safety. Um, there is a regulation that qualified staff have to have a paediatric first aid. So you want to find out and make sure they do. Um, every nursery should have a nurse. And you want to find out if the nurse is approved and there's a clinic and that's approved as well. And ask them about reporting accidents. You know, basically, how does the nursery ensure they keep your child safe. What are they doing to protect your child? And you can ask them about child protection. Um, any good nursery will have their policies readily available on their website or for you to see. And during an induction, they'll be more than happy to talk to you about all these things. If you're going on a visit or a virtual visit and you, you don't have this information, ask. You're making a really important decision about where to send your child. And you know now how important those early experiences are. You know that good quality has an impact later on. So do your due diligence, find out. Yeah, so finally, just talk to them. Ask them, talk about your child's personalities and ask them how they're going to support your child to grow and develop. I would highly recommend going to the nursery when it's open and there's staff and children there. And I would recommend observing how the staff interact with the children. Are they caring? Are they respectful? Are they attentive and responsive? You know, are they engaging the children? Or is it a case that all the staff within the classroom are busy in themselves doing tasks and not engaging with the children? You want staff to be engaging with the children. You can have the best um, resources in the world, but if you don't have the adult interacting and playing with the child, they're no use. And most importantly, are staff good role models? You saw from our video that children learn from imitation. So are the, the staff role modeling polite behavior? Are they teaching your children to have manners, to show respect, you know, observe mealtime. See if it's a nice, sociable, relaxed atmosphere. But most importantly, don't be afraid to ask questions and visit as many nurses as you feel you need to because you'll start getting a feel of what's um, good and what's not so good and we've come to the end of the session um, I'm going to answer some of your questions now I'm really really sorry about the technical issues I have faced um, I'm not very au fait with doing webinars I'm a much more hands-on uh, person to person trainer so this is all a bit new to me um, I'm trying to see if I can see the question. Ah, oh, here we go. Ah, okay. Some nurseries say that they are EYFS, but when you delve in deeper, they have the children focused on writing and there is no learning through play. What an excellent um, question to bring up. 
because of, again, when you're looking at a curriculum, you want to make sure that children, it's a learning through play curriculum because play is the way children make sense and learn in the early years. So if children are sitting at tables with worksheets and doing writing and focusing on numbers without that exploring going on, then that isn't a play-based curriculum. So no, it isn't um, acceptable. I saw a nursery that wanted children to be writing perfectly, not a nursery I chose for my child. Well done, yes. You definitely don't want your children to be writing perfectly at uh, a young age. And I'll, I'll just quickly explain to you why. Because of writing, there's two elements involved with writing. There's the understanding that print carries meaning. So the, the symbolic representation. So understanding that this symbol, this circle here, stands for the sound off. So there's that comprehension there. But it's also a physical development skill. And when children develop, no matter where they are in the world, they develop from inwards and outwards and from top to bottom. So when you have a newborn baby, they have a little bit of control of their head. And then as they start growing, their shoulders become more um, controlled and their arms flail about and then they start crawling. But eventually, as they're developing, the final thing to develop is the fine pincer skill, uh, your fine motor skills here. And that isn't actually fully developed until a child is about five. So if you're um, getting a child to write at an early age, actually they're not physically ready for it. So that's why all the activities like Play-Doh, and sand and water, you're actually helping writing skills because you're developing those um, fine motor skills. Right, seeing, do we have any more questions? I think that's it. Um, we're coming to the end of the session. Here, let me see. So that's it. That's me done. I hope that you've um, learned something from this. And as I say, I've prepared a handout for you to, um, oh, let me just see if there's any more chats here. Ah. Oh, I've had a thank you. I can stop sharing my screen. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, I hope you've learned something. And as I say, there's um, some handouts that I've put together with questions and things to look out for and things to observe. So uh, thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Mm -hmm.